Would you believe that it has been six months since I started the Tara Reed show? Six months has passed already and it's just flown by when you think about it. But at the same time, it's gone super slow because of the COVID-19 and also like doing these every week. It's like having a big homework assignment every week. It's super fun and I've been enjoying it a lot. The reason why I'm reminiscing about how long I've been here is because my first video that I launched, if you guys have been with me since the beginning, was regarding the Blue Diamond Frying Pan. So today, I am going to do my six month review of the pan now that it's not new anymore. To do this, I'm gonna make some very simple fried rice. So you can see how eggs are being cooked on here, rice, and show you how it's doing in the pan, and then also show you the cleanup and some of my opinions about it. All right, let's do this fine. Okay, let's get close up and personal about this pan. First of all, I want you to be able to see it nice and close up. There are some scratches and some residue on here. So even though from a distance still looks pretty shiny and blue and diamondy, some of the layers, the nonstick layers, have come off. And then if you look really close, the edges of this are scuffed. We cannot say that the edges are scratch proof or scratch resistant. Same goes for this handle. The little diamonds emblem on here is coming off. Still very much intact, fastened. It's not breaking, which is good. Um, you know, that's good. Overall, cosmetically, it's not shiny anymore. It's not new. Look at the back. It's worn in, stains. In my first video, I was like, I love this pan. It's love at first sight. The love is waning a little bit. And now I'm going to show you a little bit more. Let's get dinner started to show you everything that you need to know. First thing I'm going to do is chop a little onion. A little composting bin here. My city is now collecting food scraps. For fried rice, I like to have chunks here. Oh, my eyes are crying. How do my eyes look? Oh, that's how they look. Okay. Green pepper is on its way out, but it looks okay. It's just soft because I kind of left it out. But I'm going to cook it. It's going to be fine. Most vegetables are good in fried rice, except I really wouldn't put tomato in there. I'm just going to put a little bit of garlic in here. Honestly, I can't have too much garlic or onion, but This is the easy, easiest way for me to extract garlic. And then you can just peel the shell part off easily. Mix it in with this green pepper. And depending on how eggy you like your fried rice, I might start off with two, and then you can work yourself up to more if you want more. I like to pre-whisk it before I add it in. Now we're ready to give that blue diamond pan our fried rice test. So I have all my ingredients prepped over here. Blue diamond will tell you to try to keep this at a medium heat, but you and I both know that sometimes food calls for higher heat. So like now, I need to put this on medium high. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil in here. I can fry my egg. I'm gonna swish the oil around a little bit. And when I first started with this pan, you could fry the egg in here without any oil and it wouldn't stick. But now I need oil because that non-stick action, it's just not happening. Okay, my oil is hot. I just put it back down to medium. Now add the egg mixture in. The good thing about this is that I still feel comfortable using the metal spatula. In fact, I almost have to use it now because sometimes the bottom sticks. 
Now I don't want to make an omelet. This egg is moving around really well with the hot oil and it's cooking very nicely, but we definitely need the oil now. And I don't want to overcook it. I'm going to go ahead and take it out because I will toss it more later when I add everything. Okay, there's enough oil in there. I'm going to start frying this onion. Oh, good. Give that a few minutes and then I'll add the green pepper. That smells awesome. All right, these green pep bell peppers are looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for a minute. I'm gonna put all of these in with the eggs. So that's how it's looking now, as you can see. Some brown stuff is sticking to the bottom of this pan, but it is BPA free, so that gives you a little bit of peace of mind. When you're done using this on the hot, you're supposed to take it off the heat. But I'm gonna be adding more in a little bit. Okay, I'm living on the side of danger here. So I might buy the heat. Of course, the secret of fried rice flavor is in the sauce, and I'm just gonna have to show you how I do. Sesame seed oil. Probably about two tablespoons, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of ground sh ginger because I have it. It adds a little something, something, just a little bit. A little crushed red pepper to taste. I just like enough to kind of get on the top. A little bit of sesame seed. And then a little bit of salt, not too much because soy sauce is salty, and a little bit of pepper. Okay, because I'm an Americano, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter. Butter is yummy. Two little olives in there to grease the bottom. And now I'm gonna add my rice. At this point, you just want to add all your cooked ingredients together. You gotta cook everything kind of separately and then add them. So if you had chicken or shrimp or beef, you can add it all now, but it needs to be pre-cooked. Flatten that rice so it starts cooking in the butter and then add all your other cooked ingredients. And see, I can just chop my eggs up. This is almost plain fried rice. When you order plain fried rice, Usually just has eggs and onions in it and, and spices, but I add green pepper, so almost plain. I guess we could call it green pepper fried rice. Get it all mixed in there really good. You can kind of feel the rice stick to the bottom, which is actually good because you want it to be fried rice. No stick, no fry. We're gonna add the secret sauce. Let me taste it. It's pretty good. So you just season it to your own taste, okay? This is just my version. See that? Looks like the restaurant, right? Too easy. Let's taste it. It's good too. Spicy. All right, looks cooked. Good to go. Oh my gosh, so delicious. We gobbled it down. And now I'm gonna wash this pan. Well, you wanna let your your pan cool. Guys, excuse the snapping sounds in the background. It's kind of cold here tonight, so we decided to put the fire on. But here's the pan. It's nice and dirty from the fried rice. If I just add soap, you know, it's, it's coming off actually relatively easy. Not too bad. The stuff is coming off without even any water. The cleaning process is not that bad, though. I mean, it used to be easier, 
because it wouldn't even get stuck. And I would say I'm moderately hard on my pans. I'm not, you know, I don't give too much special attention. I don't always use the metal on there. I use high heat and I do wash it when it's still hot sometimes, which you're not supposed to do. You might find this a little bit nitpicky, but there is still black and brown residue on here. And for me, that's a bit annoying. You see that? It's still really shiny. It has a lot of glitter in it, which is fun. But I'm not getting that black off tonight. The other day, I had a hard time getting it off. We used a combination of baking soda and lemon juice, and that really did work. Let's see if it works now. So I'm gonna put a little bit of baking soda on it, and lemon juice. actually works pretty good. It's okay. It's still very much usable and that's that. The outside edge here is still nice and blue, bright blue. Bottom is not. Definitely discolored, permanently discolored. There you are. There you have it. That's how it looks now. And totally reusable and looks nice. So all in all, after six months, my $30 pan is still doing pretty well. It's definitely not the way it was when I first bought it. It, you know, has lost some of its non-stick. It definitely has a couple of little scratches in it. Its surface is washable in the washing machine and in the sink, um, but it is harder to wash than it was when the first month, uh, just because of the wear. And other than that, it's a good pan. I continue to use it and make great meals on it. Would I buy it again? You know what? Probably not. I think I might try something else. Wait, let's ask the real dishwasher around here what he thinks. I would totally buy this pan again. Six months of good use and it's still, you know, I just cleaned it. It's easy. Okay, okay. It is a good looking pan. You convinced me, Mike. It's definitely above average and worth a rebuy. Speaking of diamonds and things that glitter, let's read Proverbs 20, verse 15. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Nowadays, there's so much information out there, but I think there's a difference between information and knowledge. Some food for thought. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. I'm Tara Reed.